Okay, I will continue today uh, with uh, showing you a statistical approach to inverse problems. And uh, to do that, I need to rehearse, I need to hopefully remind you of some things you hopefully all saw in stochastics or probability theory. But anyway, I want to very shortly go over this. So some basics about multidimensional continuous distributions. So uh, we always assume that uh, we have a random variable x multidimensional with um, known distribution function p of x equals x. Okay, then uh, the expected value or mean value is defined as the integral over Rn. Oh, that should be in Rn. Integral over Rn x times p of x is x dx, as you would expect. And uh, of course, we have linearity. So that means e of x plus mu is e of x plus mu and e of a times x is a times e of x, which we will need. And uh, the covariance of x uh, is um, the expected deviation. So that's the expected value of x minus e of x times x minus e of x transpose. And uh, the diagonal of that is uh, the, so that's obviously a matrix. And uh, the diagonal is the variance. So it, that would be our measure for the error. And uh, the off diagonal, that's the, that's really the covariance. Uh, and um, if it's all zero, if all of the diagonals are zero, then the xi are uncorrelated. And in particular, if they are independent, then they're also uncorrelated. Now, uh, from the definition, you can take uh, that the covariance of x is always positive semi-definite, and uh, we will assume that it's positive definite. Uh, just a small, just to, to just get used to this, let's compute what for an um, n-dimensional um, a random vi variable x, uh, the covariance of a times x plus mu is, then uh, the covariance of that is the expected value of a x uh, plus mu uh, minus uh, a times e of a x plus mu. So the a mu cancels. So the mu cancels, excuse me, there's a... Um, Sorry, I got distracted for a second. Um, yeah, that's where I am. So uh, that's the expected value of ax plus mu uh, minus a, um, a times e of x minus mu. So the mu cancels. And uh, all that's left is this one over here. And you can easily see. Uh, and now you can take the a over here out since the expected value is uh, linear, and this is nothing then but the a times the covariance of x times a transpose. Okay, um, now um, we, also, we will, in our first example, we'll look at normal distributions. We already talked about Poisson. The first uh, example will be about the normal distribution. And the multidimensional normal, the standard normal distribution is given by P of X is X is uh, defined as two pi to the minus N over two E to the minus norm X squared over two for small X in Rn. And from that definition, you easily see that the integral over Rn P of X is one as it should be, right? Um, just do it component wise over here. The integral over Rn x times p of x dx, well, if you look at that, then in each component, this is an odd function integrated over all of R. So that's zero. So the expected value of capital X is zero. And uh, the same is true if uh, you're computing the integral over Rn x i x k pay of p of x is x dx. Uh, so that would be the off diagonal values of the covariance. And um, that's odd in xa and it's odd in xk if i is not equal 
to k. So again, the integral over here is zero. So uh, in fact, the covariance, that means that the covariance matrix is a diagonal. And even more, uh, on, on, the, uh, on the diagonal, we have uh, the integral over our n x i times uh, x i, 2 pi to the minus n over 2, e to the minus norm x squared over 2 dx. So that's the ith entry of the covariance, i ith entry of the covariance matrix. Now, writing it in this way, if I differentiate with respect to x i and integrate uh, with respect to this uh, uh, function over here, then we can do partial in uh, integration. And this is exactly the same as the integral over Rn e to the minus norm x squared over 2 dx. And we already saw that this is 1. So uh, in fact, for the standard normal uh, distribution, the medium value, the, the mean value is 0 and the variance is i. And we call this 0i normally distributed. Okay, so uh, now let's sigma positive definite. And uh, then we can write sigma as q d q transpose with a um, diagonal matrix d with positive entries. And then we, it makes sense to define sigma to the one half as q d to the one half q transpose, where d to the one half is just a diagonal matrix with the square roots of the uh, of the entries of D on its main diagonal. Okay, and, and of course, then we have uh, sigma, uh, sigma to the one half squared is sigma. Now, uh, let y equal to sigma to the one half x plus mu, then uh, we find that the expected value of y, of course, is, is mu, according to what I said. And the covariance of y is given by sigma to the one half. That's what I just proved. Yes, over here, uh, a times and so on. So this is sigma to the one half times i times sigma to the one half transpose. Now plugging uh, this one in over here, we find that this is nothing but sigma, huh? because this is QD, Q transpose, QD to the one half Q transpose. And then we have another QD to the one half Q transpose. And uh, the Q, Q, Q transpose cancels D to, the one, D to the one half squared is D. So this is exactly the same as sigma. Okay, so uh, this one over here has um, variant has expected value mu. So this y has expected value mu, mean value mu, and a variance sigma, a covariance sigma. And uh, now let's say what what is p of y equals y? Well, that's the uh, probability that sigma of uh, to the one half x plus mu is y. That's how we defined the y. Now, uh, substituting here, taking everything to the other side, we find that this is the probability of x equal to sigma to the one half y minus mu times one over square root of the determinant of sigma. So that's the integrating factor. And uh, now plugging in our definition of the standard normal di distribution, this is nothing but 2 pi to the minus n over 2, 1 over square root determinant of sigma, e to the minus 1 half, sigma to the minus half, minus 1 half, y minus mu, norm of that squared, or if we, that's the way I will usually use it, that's exactly the same as e to the minus 1 half, y minus mu, transpose sigma to the minus 1, y minus mu. Okay, we call that, also call that normally distributed, and we already saw that the mean value is mu, and that the variance of that is sigma. So I will use that as the definition from now on, and I should have marked that. So that definition, that's what I mean by mu and sigma normally distributed. Okay, uh, the uh, next thing we need is conditional probability. So let's assume that uh, the random variable 
Y in Rn uh, consists of two parts, Y1 and Y2. And uh, assume that Y2 is already known. And we want to find out what the probability is that Y1 is F under the condition that Y2 is G. And of course, note that uh, in this case, G is fixed. And that will also be in the next thing. Um, G is always fixed now. And we, lo uh, we look at the, um, at, uh, uh, at the probability with respect to F. And uh, the uh, uh, um, choice of F and G is uh, maybe quite uh, telling. Um, G will be something like the data that will be in data space later, and uh, that will be the image space over here. So somehow we want to find what is the probability of that the truth uh, that the true image is F, given that the data we measured is G. So that's what is behind here, and hopefully that will make uh, it a little bit more attractive to you to to know why that uh, why that. So that's important. That's why this is important. Okay, uh, and that is defined as the probability that y1 is f and y2 is g under uh, divided by the probability that y2 occurs at all. So that's the integral over p of y1 is y, y2 is g dy. So um, that uh, g that y2 is g no matter what uh, y1 is. This is the probability over here and. The other one is uh, the combined probability. OK, uh, now one theorem we definitely need, and it more or less it will, that will be all we need. Uh, we'll just have, later have just to plug it in, and um, then we'll say, OK, that's the result. So uh, that's why I didn't want to quote this from some book. Um, the problem is that uh, proving this is, is really a horror, and uh, even the stochastics statistics people uh, in the department don't prove it, I noticed. But um, at least I want to give you an idea why this is correct. OK, now, um, as before, let's assume that y is an, um, a random variable in uh, our n plus m. And it's mu k normally distributed. Uh, it consists of two parts, random variable f and a random variable g. So uh, the um, due to this over here, uh, mu can be written as f tilde and g tilde, where f tilde is the medium, uh, is the mean of f, and g tilde is the mean of g. And we have an n plus m by n plus m covariance matrix, since this is in our n plus m. And I write it uh, exactly uh, as, uh, y, uh, as uh, well, it's not, it's not y1 and y2, excuse me. Yep. This is, of course, f. Now it's gone. Now it's all gone. Excuse me. Of course, the first random variable, I used to write y1 and y2, but I wasn't convinced by that. So let's take this one. So I wrote f and g for these two. And then the covariance matrix should be um, um, of the type partitioned uh, exactly uh, like uh, like this one over here. So K11 should be an n by n matrix, K22 should be an n by m matrix, and then we have here K12 and K21, but since K is positive definite, it's symmetric. So uh, this is actually K12 transpose, and of course K11 and K22 are also symmetric. Now we look at uh, the conditional probability that uh, the first variable is f, given that the second variable is g. And uh, I claim that uh, if the whole thing f g uh, was normally distributed with respect, uh, was normally distributed, then this guy over here is normally distributed, of course, now with respect to f, because g is fixed. 
And I claim that uh, its mean is F tilde plus K1, 2, K2, 2 to the minus 1, G minus G tilde. And the covariance is given by K1, 1 minus K1, 2, K2, 2 to the minus 1, K1, 2 transpose. Okay. Um, as I said, uh, the, uh, the proof is a horror. Uh, and to get some access to this, I will assume that F tilde and G tilde are zero. And it seems I, I didn't find a diff I didn't find another proof that the only way seems to be to just uh, make the hard computation. So, but I, at least I want to tell you why um, how that comes up. Okay, uh, now uh, let's just insert the definition of the normal distribution into the definition of the um, conditional probability. Then uh, we have that P of Y is F uh, under the condition that Y2 is G is, whoops, the common probability F and G. So since that's normally distributed, that's uh, given by E to the minus F and G trans, F trans, actually F transpose, G transpose, um, K to the minus one F G times one half over, into over Rn e to the minus yg transpose k to the minus one yg one. Uh, and I forgot the one half over here, uh, dy. That's just the definition of the multidimensional normal distribution. And uh, you remember that there were some factors over here, but we get the factor in the denominator and in the denominator. So that cancels. So at least that's nice. All the factors cancel. And the only factor is the one that I forgot is the one half. Okay, so that's just inserting the definition. Now we see that uh, the structure of the exponent uh, in the nominator and in the denominator is exactly the same. So uh, let's look at that. And uh, I'll look at this guy over here. So this is, this, uh, this is one half F transpose G transpose. Um, one, no, one transpose is enough, F transpose, G transpose, so this should be a row vector, K to the minus one, FG, and this is the column vector. And uh, that's the same as, uh, ah, yeah, and now I have this K to the minus one over here. And um, I partition also the K minus one as I partitioned the K. So A11 over here should be the upper left part of K11. So that's an N by N vector. This is N by M and A12 and A12 transpose, just fill it up. And of course, we, uh, if K is positive definite, if A, uh, if K is positive definite, then K to the minus one is also positive definite. So uh, it makes sense to write everything in this way. And A11, A22 are invertible. Okay. Um, now, um, since we have this partition now, I can just plug this in. So uh, doing the matrix vector multiplication, this is nothing but F transpose A11F plus, well, I have something like F transpose A1, A12 um, times, um, times G, yes, uh, F transpose one, uh, one, uh, A12G. And I uh, get the same value the other way around. So that would be something like G transpose A1 transpose, A1 2 transpose times F. So, but this is a real number. So if I take the transpose of that, it's, it's exactly the same. So I get this term over here twice. And the last thing I have is something like G transpose A22 times G. So I have these three terms over here. And now note uh, that uh, in the uh, in the, uh, in the uh, nominator, um, G trans. Of course, this part over here is independent of F, so that comes up here. And um, th the difference between the nominator and the denominator is just that we have an F here and we have an uh, Y over here. So if this is independent of F and Y, um, that factor, so that uh, that sum. That term comes up uh, in, in both the nominator and denominator. 
And uh, since it's independent of y, I can take it out in the denominator. I can take it out uh, in the nominator. So that cancels and I for can forget about that, right? I mean, when I divide over here, then this one goes away because it comes up in the nominator and in the denominator. Okay, um, so what we're really interested in is these two guys over here. And um, these can that can be simplified in the following way. Uh, let's compute f plus a11 to the minus 1, a12 g transpose times a11 f plus a11 to the minus 1, a12 g. Okay, that, that's a term. And let's uh, uh, now compute it. So uh, that's uh, um, Ausklammer? I don't know. So that's uh, F transpose A11F plus twice as before F transpose A1. Um, that would be something like um, F transpose uh, A11, A11 to the minus one, A12, the A11 cancels, and all that's left is an F transpose A12G. Again, I get that factor twice. And um, now the only, only thing that's left is something like G transpose A12 transpose A11 to the minus one times A11. That one cancels again, but it doesn't matter anyway. A11 to the minus one, A12G. It doesn't matter because, again, this is a factor that's independent of f and y. So uh, when um, I plug this formula in, in the nominator and denominator, uh, that term comes up in the exponent. I can just take it to the front and it cancels. So I'm also not interested in this one. Okay, so, uh, but the nice thing is that this one, the one I have over here, uh, that's the same as the green one over here. So this one, so uh, what I have here, and remember that was, uh, um, so this one is, is nothing, this, <laughs> this over here is nothing but this guy, right? So this one is equal, this is equal to this one. Okay, um, now I can just plug this in. And what we had was that uh, the um, probability that y1 is f and y2 is g, is given by e to the minus one half. And then I should have this uh, giant thing over there. So f plus y a11 to the minus one a12 g. And I want to make this a little bit simpler by defining mu as minus a11 to the minus one a12 g. So uh, this is then now just an f minus mu transpose a11 and an f minus mu again. So this is nothing but e to the minus one half, f minus mu transpose a11, f minus mu. And that already looks very much like, um, um, like um, normal distribution with a covariance matrix a11 and medium value mu. And uh, also I plug in that definition below. And the only difference is that uh, I have to replace f with a y. And of course, um, um, all the factors that, uh, that are there, I already canceled them. OK, so uh, now this is exactly like this one. Uh, but uh, if you look at the lower, uh, or lower part, which is um, um, in the denominator, then, uh, in fact, this is a normal distribution. This, almost, this uh, the, the, the term over here looks like a normal distribution, except that we're missing the prefactors. So it's something like 2 pi. What's missing is the 2 pi of times m over 2 and the determinant of a11 to the minus 1 half. And, uh, uh, but otherwise, in taking the integral over here, the integral over that probability is one. So this is one up to that factor over here. And you see that this is exactly the factor that we need to make this over here a normal distribution with mean, mean value mu and covariance matrix A11 to the minus one. Okay, um, so uh, that means that the conditional probability we have over here 
is nothing but uh, an, it is a normal is in fact a normal a distributed uh, normally distributed um, it is normally distributed. That's uh, under the condition that y two is g. And uh, the uh, the new um, distribution function of this conditional uh, of this conditional over here is um, mu is the medium value. So that was a minus a one one to the minus one a one two g, and the covariance matrix is a one one to the minus one. When you go up, uh, I, let me go up. What I claimed that the mean and the covariance can be expressed by K11, K12, and K22, but now we have A11, so we still need to express that A11 to the minus one and the, the guy over here, excuse me, by K11 to K22. And uh, that's pretty simple. Um, we have uh, then a, a is a partition of k to the minus one k uh, in these uh, um, k's over here. That's the partition of k. So if I multiply the two, then that should be the identity matrix. So uh, that should be true. And now doing the matrix matrix multiplication, we have that. Um, oh, I did it the other way around. I just see. Yeah, um, oh, doesn't matter. Uh, so take this one over here to the front. Maybe I can show you that this is easy. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't. So, um, I, I'm, excuse me, I did it the other way around, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, K1, take this to the left-hand uh, left side, then K times K to the minus 1 is the identity matrix. So K11, A11 plus K12, A12 transpose is the identity matrix. I quickly decided to, to do it right. So uh, I used it the other way around here. I used it the other way around. So uh, K11, A11 plus K12, A12 transpose is the identity matrix. And uh, also you have K12 transpose times A11 plus K22, A12 transpose is zero, multiplying these over here. And um, uh, now, um, And multiplying this uh, from the, um, yeah, my, my multiplying this from the right hand side with a11 to the minus one, and from the left hand side with k22 to the minus one, um, we uh, and then taking the transpose, we have that a11 to the minus one k12. Sorry, I just had to convince myself this is correct. So uh, we have uh, we have K12 transpose A11 plus K22 A12 transpose is zero. So just by doing the matrix vector multiplication over here. And um, now, uh, um, yeah, multiplying from the right with A11 to the minus one and uh, from the uh, left, with k22 to the minus one, we have that k22 to the minus one k12 transpose plus a12 transpose a11 to the minus one is zero. And now taking the transpose of that and observing that a11 is positive definite, so it's symmetric. k22 is a positive definite, so it's symmetric. Uh, and so we have that a11 to the minus 1, a12 plus k12, k22 to the minus 1 is 0. Okay, um, now um, if I take the, if 
um, I want to show that the inverse of a11 is in fact k11 minus k12, k22 to the minus one, k12 transpose. That was what was up in the definition for the variance. So um, we have something like k11, a11 over here. Okay, that also already appeared here. So that's i minus k12, a12 transpose. And uh, that over here is left. So it's minus k12, k22 to the minus one, k12 transpose a11. Now um, I can take a k12, k22 to the minus one out over here. And what is left then is a k22, a12 transpose plus k12, a11. And hopefully that was, uh, yes, that's exactly this one over here. That was zero. So uh, that's nothing but the identity matrix. And that means that in fact, k11 minus k12, k22 to the minus one, k12 transpose is the cover is the inverse of a11. So it is the covariance matrix of our conditional uh, distribution. Okay, so, and this is the one over here. And uh, the other thing is uh, in the definition of the, um, of, the medium of the mean value, we had something like a11 to the minus one, a12. And uh, from this over here, we see that this is nothing but minus k12, k22 to the minus one. And that was exactly what also was in our definition. If I multiply that with G, then that's exactly what we had there. Okay, so for the case that uh, the mean value of F and G is zero, and in fact, that will be an important case that a uh, theorem is proved, um, it can easily uh, be extended to arbitrary mean values, but uh, it's even more horrible. So I leave this out in this case, and uh, now I will quickly use it. <laughs> 